students that were there, and I think we're on pace to do a, a great job with our season attendance. So and we're in hopes with some good weather um, and a really good team coming in that we'll have another great crowd. I certainly appreciate our students. I think the students add so much to the atmosphere of college football. They've added an awful lot of atmosphere, so we're excited about that. Uh, playing uh, Nevada, uh, the Wolfpack, uh, they're playing well. Uh, they, they ran into a tough game this last weekend against Utah State, who we think is a good game, but it's exciting. We're getting into the back end of our season now, and every one of these games is so important. Uh, there's conference implication, champions involved, and uh, for us, just doing everything we can to win the next game. Uh, we did get through the game, I think, fairly healthy. Uh, but we're certainly, you know, there's going to be some guys that may miss practice a little bit today, uh, but we're in hopes to have some of those guys back. Some of the guys that I, I updated the uh, depth chart with uh, <clears throat> with Tim, uh, we will not have Alonzo Velasquez. I think he's going to go under some surgery, whether that's, you know, short-term, um, you know, surgery or he'll be miss the rest of the year. We'll find out a little bit more as we go. We are expecting Mario Amora back. Uh, we're hopeful to have him back in the defensive line, so that's certainly going to help. And uh, I, I do think right now it may be looking a little bit uh, doubtful with Ryan Galovich that uh, Tim Zaleski went in and punted well, uh, but we'll know a little bit more of that as we go. So that's the update on injuries. Uh, we're certainly excited about playing at home again. <clears throat> um, and uh, so at this time, I'll open up to any questions anybody may have out there. The nature of the of the uh, Galovich injury? Uh, it's something in his upper extremity, in his shoulder. You know, he, I thought he really did an athletic play by securing the snap and getting the, the ball off, and then he got crushed. And uh, we'll know a little bit more later on today. But <clears throat> it wasn't anything with his legs, but it has everything to do with the shoulder, certainly catching the football. Uh, so we'll know a little bit more about that as we go. Yes. Nevada is another team like New Mexico that gives up a lot of passing yards. Do you expect uh, the passing offense to take another <laughs> step this week? Well, I think it's important for us to kind of know who we are, um, dance with who brung us. However, we have been throwing the ball better in practice, and I think we threw the ball better in the game. Certainly, uh, in our completion percentage was better to say that we're just going to flip the field and, and say we're going to drastically change. and and send a, a message out to Coach Norvell, Norvell that I've been in touch with Mike Leach and we're going to be air raid uh, within one week. I think that'd be a, a, an overstatement. But I think it's important for us uh, you know, to recognize we need to throw the ball better and we're making strides that way. Coach, kind of following up on that, you're so predicated on the play-action pass. Obviously, you got to get your ground game going, but how effective do you feel can your play-action be given how you've run the ball so far? Well, some of it's going to be contingent. I think uh, we think, as I've watched uh, Nevada, they do a great job with their defensive front. They operate out of a three-man front. They do a good job up front. And so, you know, just because we like to run doesn't mean that we're just going to be able to go in and pound our chest and say we're going to impose our will on them. We, we need to run the ball well. Uh, but every defensive coordinator in the country knows if you're running the football well, it opens up the play-action pass. But all those play-actions don't work so well if you can't run. And so... Uh, we're not going to change drastically who we are. I think it's important to kind of know who we are. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, as you go in and you look at opponents and they're looking at us, it's a somewhat of a chess match and you try to project. And then you get in the course of the game, then you make some adjustments. Nevada has uh, gone through a couple different quarterbacks mm -hmm. this yeah, year. Yeah, they have. Um, Malik Henry's the latest one. What do you see from them offensively? Well, Malik is a guy, uh, you know, can put up great numbers against San Jose. And San Jose is an emerging, improving football team. Uh, he's got a strong arm, and he's mobile. And uh, I'm sure they're looking at, okay, does he give us the best chance to win? <clears throat> Coach Norvell is an old um, offensive guy. He was an offensive coordinator, so he's pretty in tune with offense and particularly quarterbacks. Um, I, you know, I don't know if I don't know if they've announced who's going to play this week, but. He's playing well, and uh, you know he can throw the ball well. He's got a big arm. He was heavily, re heavily recruited out of high school. Uh, I think he's from Los Angeles, and probably not too far from your neck of the woods, maybe. But um, but he's got a lot of ability, and we'll, if he's a, if he's our starter, we'll need to play well. Whoever they have back there, you know they change a little bit with their quarterbacks, not drastically, but there is a tinge of change. We've 
poured through every tape uh, when each of the guys played, uh, but that's who played last week. Other questions? Davis. Right, when you are seeing defense of like seven, eight, sometimes nine man boxes, it's still running the ball as effectively as you are. What, what goes into that? How are you guys able to continue <laughs> to do that? Well, um, you know, a lot of it is uh, maybe some past experience that you have. Um, running the football is hard. Yeah. It's hard work. And, you know, you hear, hear everybody will talk about we want to run. We want to run the football. We want to play tough football. We want to be physical. We want to run the football. And many times those are slogans by coaches that are put on T-shirts that really when it comes time to watch the tape, they don't see it. And so if you can do that, even though the guys deploy more guys up the line of scrimmage, uh, it imposes your will on an opponent. <clears throat> and uh, when that those chains move, uh, you know, as the question came up, the play action pass comes into play. Uh, it certainly is harder uh, when more guys are allocated up there. But, uh, you know, my mentor, Coach Osborne, always believed in running the football. And you had to throw it. But uh, if you could run, and, and no matter if they put eight or nine guys up there, and you found a way to uh, get guys, because they still got to tackle. And there's still safety, still got to fit in the right place. And uh, that's where X will pop a run. Somebody's in the wrong fit. Um, it is hard to run the football. Uh, but, however, uh, we think Nevada's doing a good job. Um, we, we, we can't be one-dimensional, though. We've got to be able to throw the football. But we're not going to abandon what we are, and we need to have our linemen be able to come off the ball, double team, have a fullback in the game. I mean, I think a fullback is a dying breed right now. At one time, that used to be a stable in everybody's offense. And, you know, we've got, uh, we've got a couple fullbacks out there, and that makes a difference for us. Yes. Uh, back in the back. Uh, Mr. Coach, do you ever wonder what it would be like to have uh, Elijah Alliburton for all four years as a starting yeah. safety? Yeah, you wonder when he played as a true freshman uh, going down on the kickoff team, and it's great that we've had Logan. You know, he, he's been a real pleasant surprise. It was interesting. He played quite a bit last year. We played with three safeties quite a bit, but, you know, the big headliners were Marcus and, and Andrew. And uh, Elijah was out there and did some good things, but he had a real frank conversation uh, with me. I bumped into him after an off-season conditioning uh, drill, and he really went through what his expectations were of himself. And they were pretty high. And um, he set a high bar for his performance. And I can tell you his performance has matched his expectation. And uh, he's been a joy to coach. Uh, he is always around the football, and he's very talented at what he does. And so... Um, how many more games we have with him as a senior? I'm personally going to enjoy every single one of them. Yes. Keon, uh, career high nine tackles on Saturday. What have you seen in terms of his development at that nickel position and kind of his flexibility? Well, we play nickel a whole lot more than we do base, and so he's played a lot of reps, and he's a converted corner, so he's got excellent corner cover skills. The, the, all, the challenge always is can you take a guy who's a cover corner and have that translate into being a physical player because many times some of the things that we ask this nickel to do are it's a slash linebacker position. And so have the hybrid position to be able to cover guys man-to-man, -man, yet be physical enough to make tackles in space. He's done well. He's an emerging player, and he's learning how to play there. Yes. You brought up on Saturday uh, a little bit about Cooper uh, and kind of the mm -hmm. uh, shaky season he's had kicking. Um, yep. are, are you seeing it as more of a mechanical thing, or is there a mental thing in there too right now? Well, I think it's a combination of both. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's got he, – he, he constantly pours through uh, his tape, and we, we videotape a lot of things. But I've said earlier that there's three elements on, on his extra points field goals, more so than the kickoffs <clears throat> have been excellent. However – uh, you know, it, it, it does come back to the place kicker, and so we're going to work hard this week. Uh, what is great about Cooper is uh, he's got a really steady uh, internal compass. It's not like he's out there stressing. And so, you know, when we had to kick the field goal there to change the point total, there was no doubt in my mind, send him out there, he's going to get it done. And, and, you know, I don't know if, you, if you're a golf uh, avid fan, um, but, you know, if you remember Greg Norman hit and missing a couple of the punt, not punts, but putts, um, that's, what, that's what goes through a guy's mind. And so I think he's got a really steady compass. We're going to work on that. He needs to perform better, though. Yes? Coach, X had 33 carries on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Is that 
too many? You'd like to see him get more of a rest? Um, well, that's the most he's had, and that's encouraging. I think that's the most he's had, and that's that's encouraging on his part. You know, he's not – his physical stats are, while he's gotten stronger, you know, he's not the 225, 230-pound tailback like Ryan Hill. Uh, but he, he's toting the leather pretty doggone good. And he his, the way he makes cuts certainly makes a difference. Uh, we're looking at spreading the ball around. Uh, you know, the other tailbacks we have in there, we feel good about that they can come in. But there's no there's no question that X adds a element uh, to our running game that we don't normally have. And so 33 carries is probably a little bit much, but it's great that he was out there. Uh, he did miss, uh, you know, a couple carries. And I was screaming on the sideline, where's he at? You know, I thought a nickel, or his ankle was bad or whatever. And he, his contact was out. I was like, dang it, a contact? You know, at least put a patch over and let him run with one eye. But uh, I thought he played well. Yes. Cole Godbout, you mentioned getting Mario Moore back, but what have you seen in Cole's development, Coach, and, and how he's kind of plugged in in that man rotation? Uh, a pad level has been really good. Coach Caligas has done a great job mentoring him, bring him along. He's got good arm extension. He's got good strength. He's playing with really good technique. He's not getting knocked off the football, and he's securing his gap. Um, you know, he, he was a, he's been a pleasant surprise. You know, I don't know if you remember Ravante Holt really going into this the fall was a, our top defensive tackle. And so when you lose a bell cow like Ravante, you, you go, okay, you know, you always hear this next man up mentality. That all sounds good as a mantra. Well, the next guy, he's got to come up. And he certainly has. Yes, Lewis. At he had the fumble recovery, he had the fourth down stop. It seems like whenever he's in there, he's also another safety that's around the ball. What, he, what, what well, happened? it tells me to play him more. You know, um, I can tell you this, our, our confidence level is better with him. And he's been encouraged. And I talked to him about his play during uh, fall camp because I'd noticed a difference. And, you know, last year he was kind of in and out, didn't know, okay, is he really going to come on and be a contributor? And he, he came into fall camp and he was, he prepared well during fall camp and it was showing. And now he had an opportunity, he's taking advantage of his opportunity. Yes. Really, really important question. Um, Josh Allen versus Carson Wentz this weekend. Who you got? I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling for both of them. Yeah. Yes. So you mentioned after the game, there some maybe a, a spot on the turf in the field where that sometimes gets the way where you guys practice kicking. Is that something you have to deal with every season or fix? Or no, it's just season? it's a little bit of – you know, kickers are – I should have been more aware of it because we go out and we practice in the same spot. Uh, I know the maintenance crew is going to make some adjustments to it, and um, we're hopeful. That's one thing that's nice about having field turf. I will see where it's at, uh, you know, today. Uh, but we can't put everything on. Okay, there's a dip in there. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta kick the ball. When you got an extra point, you gotta kick it better. Yes. You touched on Nevada's quarterback and a little bit on their three-man front. Any more you can kind of expand on what you see with Nevada both sides? Oh, I, I think offensively they got some great weapons. They're, they're wide receivers or big-time players. They go up and get the football. They've made big plays. They've got a very capable running game. Uh, their defense is uh, – when we talk about their their players beyond just being out there, they've got good explosion. They're, there's a term we use, twitchy. I mean, they've got good quickness and explosion. Uh, so um, – you know, they're a good football team, and uh, we're a good football team. And so we're going to need to play well. We'll need to play better than what we played Saturday. Uh, and, you know, they, they came up. They beat Purdue at the beginning of the year. They've had some good wins. Uh, I know this. We're excited about being at home. It's another big opportunity for us to take another step forward. Do, yes, they, do they use Malik and RPOs and a lot in the running game? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's always amazing to me. I'm not going to be like Mike Leach and get off on a tangent here, but RPOs, okay? I would challenge if I got you guys up on the board and said, okay, is this an RPO or that? How many people could really identify an RPO? As I said on one meeting, you know, I heard these commentators talk about all this, and I'm going, that is not an RPO. This is an RPO. And so sometimes I, I think some of the uh, commentators that they have need to, Maybe go to Gruden's football one-on-one. <laughs> <laughs>
I would say you guys would all pass, so you're very capable. You're very capable except no, you're not. You're out of your you're out of your realm. But the good thing is I think you know it. You know myself. Yes. Anything else? How much more difficult and I mean you guys use the sun. How much more difficult has the RPO made to defend the offenses? It's huge. Um and I was an old defensive coordinator. I sat on the competition committee, and we had passed a rule. This is controversial. We had passed a rule uh, making it illegal for offensive linemen to get one yard pass on a pass. And um, so that went through the rules committee, went through the competition committee, and then where it got changed, I think I know, and I'm not a – liberty to say here, but I went off on a tantrum, a tantrum at a meeting because coaches went through this and everybody did it and I went off on a tantrum and one of the guys raised a hand and told me I was the one that overturned it. Now the genie's out of the bottle. We ain't getting it back. And I think the officials are doing a better job of, of saying, okay, when the ball is released, where is the lineman at? But it has changed what you do I mean, it's just open. It's been an advantageous play for the offense because you're now defending two things. And, um, you know, as you as you deploy your defensive guys, you've got to account for both. And that's a real challenge. It stresses the defense. It makes it more engaging for fans. But it is it has changed. That has changed the game. And I'm not saying to the same degree the forward pass did, but it changed the game. And But the thing is, everybody knows it. And we have what we have. Anything?